problems on problems on problems on problems on problems on problems I solve them. I run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. I've seen the data mosh effect used in music videos, and I've always wondered how to implement that effect using Final Cut Pro 10. It's a pretty cool effect that usually happens by accident. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can easily do this effect using a cheap and affordable plugin. And make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so that every time I post a new video, you guys will be updated. This data mosh effect plugin was created by the awesome guys over at Pixel Film Studios. They made a really easy to use and intuitive plugin that meshes in well with Final Cut Pro 10. You can generate real data mosh effects in seconds by simply just importing your media and adjusting a few parameters. Once you hit that mosh button, the plugin pretty much does the rest. So there's a bunch of ways that you guys can use this effect. One way is to data mosh a single clip. Another way is to use the data mosh effect to transition to another clip. I'll show you guys how to do both in this video. First, let's start off with a single clip data mosh. Find a clip that you want to use and drag it onto your project timeline. Once you're done, export the clip by clicking on the export button and then master file. Change the settings so that the format is in video and audio and codec in Apple ProRes 422 so you get the best quality possible. Click on next and then save your file. Now you can either start a new project or just delete the video that you have in your current one. Once you have a clean timeline, look for the Pixel Film Studios Final Cut Pro 10 data mosh generator and drag it into your project timeline. The length of this generator doesn't matter, so you can leave it as is. Now on the right side of your screen, in your inspector tab, you'll see the data mosh parameters that you will need to create the effect. Let's start off by loading the file we want to mosh up by clicking on load file and selecting the clip that we previously exported. It should load up in the mini screen right after. To start the data mosh effect, we will need to set the start frame and the end frame. You'll be able to see each individual frame in your clip by scrubbing through in the mini window above. At the top right corner, it will tell you what the frame number is for that exact frame. For this one, I will start at frame 10 and leave the end frame as is. The iframe gap interval is where it creates the cool data moshing effect. The lower the number, the more interesting the effect will come out. So make sure to play around with these numbers. I will set mine to about 15,000 for this clip. The P frame controls lets you set the number of times it repeats and the number of intervals. I think every clip will come out different so try different combinations. For this one we will set the number of repeats to about 5. You can also mosh up the audio so it goes with the effect. I won't be using it in this tutorial though. For your output controls, make sure that they are set to the same settings as your project. So I will leave mine at 1920 with 24 frames per second. Once you are done this, click on mosh at the top of the screen and wait for it to export. It will save in the same folder where you have the original clip saved. Now I'll show you how you can use this effect to transition in another one. Drag two clips you want to use into your project timeline. I played around with different types of clips and haven't really noticed a difference in which ones turn out better. You just need to keep messing around with different clips to see which one work well together. If you need to slow it down or add some type of speed ramp effect, you should do so now. Once you are done, export the file like how we did in the first example. Then start a new project or clear the current one. Drag the data mosh generator onto the project timeline. And for this one, I will start the effect right away. So I will leave it at zero and I'll have it end at around frame 75. Just note, it doesn't fully get rid of the data mosh effect even if I ended it at frame 75. It will start to diminish some of it, but it will still leave bits of it in your footage. I will set the iframe gap interval to about 5000 and adjust the number of p-frame repeats to about 20. I'll keep everything else the same and then hit the mosh button. Add some color grading and sound effects if you want it to pop out even more. Now this is how it turned out. If you're not happy with how it turned out, just adjust some of the settings and hit mosh again. You can do this as many times as you want until you get it to look how you like. And again, just remember, every clip you use will create different results. The best thing to do is try out different combinations. 
And a special thanks again to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring this video. So these guys make some amazing plugins that I've been incorporating in a lot of my videos and even my client videos as well. They have hundreds of plugins and presets that you can choose from and most of it is for Final Cut Pro 10 so make sure to check it out when you get the chance. Also the first 500 people to buy the Data Mosh plugin will get 30% off. So make sure to click on my link in the description down below and use the code PRIMETIMEPIXEL. I'd love to see what you guys come up with using this effect so make sure to leave your link in the comments section below and I'll make sure to take the time to check them out. It's my time in my prime. This the prime time for the content. Are you content? No nonsense. Just to go get her on a conquest. Hey.